Hello everyone, this is Guffinator from Clearly Locked Team Go, and today we're going to be talking about Dark Souls Fashion Souls. So as you can see here in Dark Souls, well, I'm going to be showing you different sets I like and I think are pretty cool looking. Now, I'm going to tell you, this isn't going to be the sets like, oh, you can win the game with this or anything. It's going to be strictly, this looks cool and you can use it. So first up, what we have here is I like to call is the Undead Hunter. Now, he looks like a hunter. And here's what you have. We have the Abelisk, the Cestus, which is optional. Unless you're good with pairing, then you should probably use it. The Sunless Talisman. And we have my new favorite weapon, the Tailbone Short Sword. We have the Gauntlets of Thorns and the Leggings of Thorns. We have the Firekeeper Robe, the Sage's Big Hat. We have the Carthus Blood Ring, Flynn's Ring, the Chlorinthian Ring, and Hawk Ring for that extra range. Now, in this build, the weapons, as you will see here, I have the Cestus for cosmetics, usually, is what I use it for. And you can parry with it. And we have the talisman for the Tears of the Denial. Now this spell makes it so you basically have a second chance. If you go down, you like, uh, say a hit kills you normally. It'll bring you back to life with one HP. But when that happens, you should probably run it away. And this sword right here that I'm swinging right here is, um, it's basically the Drake sword of this game. I'm pretty sure it is like a remnant of the Drake sword because it has the same abilities in the description, which I'm not really going to show you right now, but see that? It's like the Drake sword. And you get it in the uh, the prisons, I believe, where before you get to perfect capitals. Now, here's my stats. I'm not going to use these in the builds. Like, I'm not going to show you because I'm not going to, you know, be like, oh, whatever. Because all these things can be improved by you, and I hope they are. So, without further ado, let's see if we can get into some gameplay. Okay, so getting into some gameplay with this, this is a, uh, well, crap. Well, anyways, once the, uh, you get back in here, which you're about to see the best thing about this game is the loading screen, which is loading screen simulator. It's not to say Dark Souls, that's for a ruse. It's actually loading screen simulator, because most of the time, you're going to be looking at loading screens. Nah, I'm just kidding. But anyways, um, you, this build is single target based, like... See, you have the short sword weapon, which is for one target, and you have the bow, which is a crossbow. Now I'm just going to sit here so I can get the guy here and see if we can do this more successfully. Now you're going to need to roll around a lot during this. That's why we have the uh, Karthus Blood Ring, so we can um, roll around without getting hurt as much. Now as you see here, I'm just using that ability. And what you're going to want to do with this build also is it's going to be a lot. Ow. It's going to be a lot of baiting of attacks. You're going to have to bait the enemies into doing it. As you can tell, i uh not so good right now. Because to tell you the truth, I usually wear absolutely no armor and I just roll around everywhere. Whew. But I do use the dragon stuff. But this build can be pretty good. I like it. It is really effective against bosses. I'll tell you that. Because it just does a crap ton of damage against bosses. I know it doesn't show it right now against this guy, but it still does a decent amount. Whew, large time, nice shard. That's what I needed. And my inspiration from this is, uh, I really like Bloodborne. I never played it because I don't have PlayStation. But I thought this kind of reminds me of the, uh, one of the cr NPCs is like a crow. Dressed like a crow, and that's what this reminds me of. And that's where I got my inspiration from this. Now, I usually have troubles with the, uh, spear guys. And, oops, I tried to kick them, but also you can't kick with a crossbow. Just a safety tip. Uh, let's see here. Oof. Oof. I'm getting cutting close. Oof. See, there it is. That's why we use the sparrow. The tears of the denial. Because, see that? I just came back with one health. Now, that was really close. If it was just normal, I would have been dead. Right here, we're going to be going and killing this guy eventually, hopefully. See, baiting for more attacks. Now, it is, it can take out a lot of group of enemies, but you'll have to do it one at a time. Unless you upgrade this more, you can probably do it more, but, you know. Depends on what you want. And, uh, I'm not saying these are the best builds, like I said at the beginning of the video. These aren't very good. Like, the best. Like, there's some builds where you can insta-kill bosses, like the, um, like I've seen, which is, uh, Aniri's Sword. Which is based off of luck. If you get a lot of luck in different things, you can, almost, you can... Oof, you can kill a lot of things really fast. Like the best watcher especially. But, um, if you don't know about that, there's a video on YouTube, and you should look it up. 
like a near straight sword luck build or something. But uh, let's get in here. All I need is a few more hits, possibly one. Let's wait for another attack and swing. There we go. He's dead. And what did I get? Oh, you know, that's the first time I ever got a Titanite chunk. I tried farming and uh, here and I never got him. That's the first time. So now there's one guy over here that uh, buffed him. I just need to find it. And there he is. Now it's good against these enemies because they have no armor. And it's good for online play if you're playing, if you're, you're basically being a ganker. Or if, if you want to, you can just go and freaking spam lift trigger if you want. Or you could just, uh, you know, just be good, get good, and do a solo battle, which is what people should do instead of ganking. You know, be honorable. And, uh, but you know, people do what people do. I mean, not, I'm not gonna lie, I ganked a few times because there's times where I'm like, man, I don't have time for this. Then, uh, yeah. Then, uh, well, in my death, I'm gonna just say, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, go. Okay, with this one, I like to call this the Dark Moon Enforcer. Mainly because, uh, I don't know why, it just reminds me of something that a Dark Moon Covenant Knight would wear because of all this silver. The scythe, I mean, I just feel like that'd be it. So we have the Pontiff Knight Great Scythe, the Cetus again, optional, unless you give the parries, Sunless Talisman, the Wolf Knight Armor, Artorius's, Outrider's Knight Helmet, Ferrum Gauntlets, and the Lorian's Leggings. Now we're gonna need the Knight Slayer's Ring because you're gonna break a lot of shields because that's what a scythe usually does. The Clorin's Dan Ring, the Flynn's Ring, and not last least, the same Carthus Blood Ring because we're still gonna be rolling. So as you can see here, we're going to be using the Great Scythe. I love Scythe. I went through half the game with the regular Scythe. And uh, this one's pretty special because it has a special blue which says Frostbite. Now to tell you the truth, I have no clue what Frostbite does. Never figured out. But I'm assuming if it's on a weapon, it might be good. So uh, since we're going to be hitting a lot of enemies with shields, I mean, you still get status effects when you get hit. So uh, we're going to say this. So uh, I'm just going to, you know, show you guys what to do. Yeah, also I forgot to mention, I'm going to be going areas to uh, the further game areas, at least this one is. The last area you can get in pretty quickly in the game. But here we're at a, uh, if you don't want me to say the name, you should probably lose the video right now. Arch Dragon Peak. And uh, you see we're using our spell and we're going to be fighting little serpent men. So you see here, let's see if we can, uh... now this is a really good weapon. The scythes are always good weapons for the, uh, the deacons of the deep. That boss fight especially because that's such a wide range if you use the two-handed. Right now I'm just going to use the single-handed attack since I'm fighting them one at a time. Now like I said, this is like, oh it doesn't do that much damage, or oh we could do so much better with another weapon. Well yeah, you probably could, but it's just for uh, fashion souls. You know, and you could probably make it better. Like I said, room for improvement, a lot. Okay, so what you're going to do is we're going to go and kill all the enemies here. And hopefully not die because we have our spell equipped. Hopefully don't have to use it, but you never know. Uh, if this goes well, by the way, I will probably make a second one. I'm gonna do either three. Yeah, I'm gonna do three. Ow. He did a fireball. And now he's just gonna do fireballs. But, uh, I'm gonna do three outfits each time. Uh, depending on my creative mind and one of, uh, MWC's friend, Monroe. See if I can, you know, collaborate with him and see if we can both put our minds together and find some cool outfits. That seemed really cool, and maybe we can find one that's actually really effective. You never know. So, yeah. So there's going to be three, and this is obviously number two. Now, let's see if we can find the last two. I know there's two more down here, I think. Yes, here's one of them. Oh, coming in for that backstab. I'm just going to comment right now about the backstabs of this game. A lot of the enemies that are bigger than you, you shove your weapon in their, uh, excuse my language, their anus. And it kills them, like especially the silver and black knights, which is, which is quite strange, but I find humorous. Ooh. Yeah, see the attack I'm doing right now? It does critical damage every time you hit the enemy. If they're close to you, because it aims for their neck, apparently. This is the serpent thing, so their neck is everywhere. So, you know, whatever. He's mine. I own him. I killed him. And if I could, I would teabag him. Well, I guess I could. Certain emote, but that's going to be for a joke later. So, uh, I think I should go ahead and, uh, go to the very last one, which is a pretty humorous one, in my opinion, so... 
let us be off. Okay, so for our last build, I like to call this the Chess King. Because in this build, we're going to be slow, just like the game of chess. And we're going to go and freaking tank through all these enemies. It's like the tank can. Well, I meant to say the king, but you know. So we're going to be using the Moonlight Great Sword, which is one of my favorite great swords. The Pyromancy Flame, the Cestus, as always. The Dragon Scale Armor, we're going to use Gundyr's Helmet. We're going to use the Brass Gauntlets and Smo's Leggings. And the Witch's Ring, which boosts Pyromancy. Clorinthian Ring, like always. Flynn's Ring. Well, no, we're not going to use Flynn's Ring. But yes, you know what? We're going to be slow. So, you know what we're going to use instead? I'll tell you what we're going to use instead. We're going to use another Ring of Steel Protection. So, now we're going to use the Great Swamp Ring. Is our two things, our spells, are both Pyromancies. Now, as a king, you need Disciples. So, we're going to use Report to mind control enemies. And Iron Flesh to be just like a chess board. And go very slow. The game of chess is slow. So are we. So, as you can see here, we have Report Iron Flesh. Iron Flesh will make us slow. And it also gives us additional poise. Which, in this game, is, uh... Scarce in some ways. So we have the Moonlight Great Sword, and the good thing about the Moonlight Great Sword is it's magical, and it doesn't use the what is it called? I think it's F points, FP, and uh, for its good attack, in my opinion. So let's go ahead and cut to the gameplay, shall we? And we're here. We're gonna be hopping into this gameplay right in a second. See, so you can see the moon behind me, which means I have beat the game on this character, and I have not went to another new game. So we're going to be going up here, and with a report we're going to get us some disciples, because the king needs disciples and uh, servants. Basically as Osiris says, the servants. So as you see there, I can no longer lock onto him, and there's red mist going around, or more pink, I don't know, I'm colorblind. One of those two. And uh, it doesn't seem like he's working like he should, so he's, he must die. Does he disobey the king, so he must die. Rubbish. The king does not demand rubbish. He demands souls. So let's go this way. Into the darkness. Break all these pots. The king doesn't give a guff. Here we go. Kill this little uh, thing. There's a debate on what those are. My brother calls them goblins. I call them some things. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to get more disciples. Let's just uh, think that first. That's one, and that's two, and he just killed one of my own disciples. They are ruthless for their king, and I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just like the king, he doesn't have far of a range in chess, so he doesn't have a far range in this. But he does do a lot of damage. See, if the chess was like this, it'd be awesome. <laughs> See, as you can see, my uh, mana bar, or whatever you want to call it, isn't being drained when I use this attack, because it's uh, just the regular R2 attack. And, uh, see, the hug of death does not please the king. King, ow, hey! That also does not please the king. King only wants souls, and that's what his disciples will give him, because I am the king. I am the chess king. Am I the king of Dark Souls? No. Has it tell you the truth? I'm not the best Dark Souls player. Now, uh, how about we just, uh, rude? So you had to just get the power of the pimp hand sometimes and just slap them, your disciples around. So, uh, what we're gonna do is flip to some more gameplay of Iron Flesh. Because I was a dumb dumb, I did not, uh, the other gameplay when I was using my disciple spell where I get people, I, uh, we out of mana, or whatever you want to call it, so I can use Iron Flesh. So, I'm going to be going through here, find some dogs with Iron Flesh, see him? Come on. Okay. One's down. Now we have, uh, let's see, how many is there? One, two, three, four more. Yes, there is four more. That's one. Nope, and my poise, my awesome poisonous is gone. So you know what we're going to do? We're just going to get some of that lotion, we're just going to spread it all over us once we find the other two dogs. Which is over here by this carriage. Just having a nice little meal. There we go, lotion's on me. We're going over here. And... Nothing. Notice me. Ah, oh, finally they noticed me. See that? 
Don't even phase me. Because we are the chess king. And the chess king must not be challenged. And when he does, he will not move from his post. So that was the last build. I hope you guys liked that. And uh, stay tuned for an ending message. So I just wanted to say, guys, thank you for watching. And if you like this, we will be... Well... I will, and hopefully Monroe, if he comes and assists with this, we will be doing more Dark Souls videos like this. It might not be just the Fashion Souls, though. could be for any. So, uh, I'm going to end you guys off with a special move to uh, Sigurd, if he's out there listening. So, I'd like to see you guys with a goodbye.